Hello, friends and colleagues, and welcome back to the latter tutorial series. It has been a while. Uh, I've been working hard on my game Into the Maze, and uh, I felt inspired lately uh, to go back in creating video and finishing this uh, series and maybe make new ones. Uh, just before we continue, I would like to mention I also uh, Twitch uh, my work. I stream my work on Twitch, uh, working on my game, and you are more than welcome to jump in um, and join the conversation and help me with my uh, struggle with game dev. Um, I've been working on my game for almost two years now and I would like to uh, share my work with you. So um, feel free to jump in and follow. And uh, without further ado, let's continue. So um, it, it has been a while. Um, what we had before is we just uh, finished hooking up the animation for a character and uh, allowing it to walk up and down uh, the ladder. Right, uh, what I want to do today is um, give the ability of my character to just get off the, the ladder the moment it touches the ground. And there's a few ways to do it, but we're going to choose one. Um, in my game, actually, I'm doing it with a simple collision box uh, just below the ladder here that checks whenever we touch it, it just changes the animation. But we're going to do it differently this time. We're going to do it with a line trace. So the way this is going to work is whenever we are climbing the ladder, we are going to check um, if we are next to the floor. And if we are next to the floor, we're just going to go back to our function, toggle jumping, and set it to off. Uh, toggle climbing, sorry. And set it to off. That's what we're going to do. So let's go ahead and do that. So first of all, uh, we're going to use um, the tick event. The tick event... In Blueprints, this is our third-person character. And I'm just trying to also refresh my memory and yours uh, because it has been a while since the last one. Um, so in case you don't have the tick here, the tick event, you can just right-click, type tick, and here we go. Here's the tick. The tick event is working, is, is actually shooting off every frame. So every frame our game is running, uh, everything here we have on the right, every code you write here on the right is going to work, is going to um, to do something. So we can just test this by like doing a print string just to show you if you're not familiar with the tick. We just do this, hit compile and play, and we'll see hello is being printed here on the left like a trillion times because it's printing it every frame. So what you want to do is actually we want to check while we're climbing, we want to check if we are uh, next to the floor, right? And we want to check this like almost every frame as we are climbing, right? Because we don't know when there's going to be a floor below us, right? We don't know when. Um, the thing with the tick function, and maybe you've heard this, uh, a lot of people are talking about this. This is very, this is like more expensive just because it's happening every frame. So um, let's say our, um, like if we're using our um, snap character to ladder uh, event we had here, this is happening only when we call this event, right? So only when we say, hey, snap character to ladder, it, it's, it's playing this animation. But this tick event is actually going to happen every frame. So if we have a really complicated code here uh, and it's going to run every frame, it's going to slow uh, our game down, right? So in order to, we're also going to do some optimizing tricks. So a lot of people saying, uh, try not to use the tick. Uh, and, and I agree, I mean, but um, this is a rule of thumb. So you, you, you shouldn't avoid this at all costs. Like some things you need, you can only do with the tick event. And they're actually quite common. Um, a lot of people use them uh, quite a lot. Uh, although maybe um, the common assumption that this is very rare. Uh, but I don't, don't believe this is the case. So what are we going to do? We're going to check not every frame, but almost like when it's relevant. That's how we do the optimization. We're going to check when it's relevant to us. Uh, we're going to check if we're next to the ground. So let's start without optimizing or anything. Let's just do the, the line trace, right? So a line trace is just a array we shoot from our character to any direction right, that we want. And whenever it hits something, um, it just gives us like a hit event with some data out of it. So what we're going to do is we're going to shoot that ray down. And if we encounter a floor or any object, we uh, at a certain distance, like let's say 10 centimeters or something, we, we know we're next to the floor. And if the character, the, the player is like pushing down on the control, it probably wants to go off this, right? So let's try, let's start with the trace itself. How does the trace work? So uh, we have a few traces, but 
Let's bring the most simple one. I'm just right clicking and typing line trace. And we're going to choose the line trace by channel. We have a, a few different ways to trace. It means just that we are checking against different things like um, uh, visibility or a certain object or a profile or whatever, right? But we want to check against the visibility, right? Because it's it's the most simple thing. Like if something is, is checked as visi visible, it's going to return like the floor. Like all every static mesh in my world that I want the character to react to is going to be visible. So I'm going to use that. So you see, we have we have a visibility. The trick with the line trace is to understand um, how to create the ray, how to to know where to shoot it to, like what direction. We know when we want it to start, right? We, let's say we want to start it at our character position, right? Let's do uh, let's get the location of our character. Get acto location. I'm typing, right? It's just going to return um, the center of this capsule. And now I need to tell it where I want the line trace to end, right? And this is not a complicated, but it's a little bit m slightly more advanced um, uh, vector calculation. We want to know, like, first we need to figure out the direction, right? We, we did this with the other stuff. So uh, if you want to shoot the ray upwards, rightwards, or forwards, right, we can get the vector, like the up vector, the forward vector, or the right vector, depending where we want to shoot the ray. You'll see this in a second. So what we want to do, we actually, let's start with up, right? Let's just shoot a ray upwards. Let's do get. So what we're we doing is get up, uh, get actor up vector. That's the function we are looking at, right? And what we want to do here now, what this is returning, this is just returning like a, like the direction, which is a normalized vector. vector. It means that it gives me like a number between one to uh, zero to one. Um, so we want to create like a distance, like a longer, um, a longer line, right? Not just one unit, but maybe 100 unit in that direction. So what we want to do is just multiply this with whatever number we want, let's say 150. And then we need to, so now we have the line, right? It's a line, but now we need to, we need to tell it where do we start that line from? Um, like where's, where's the position of the line? Uh, compared to the to like to a pivot so we need to add this right to also to the actor location right i don't want to go into vector math too much but that's how we find the end position of our vector right we just add the beginning right and we um just uh add this um, direction vector with a with a scalar here so if i'm if i'm connecting this to the tick and just to show you how it's working we can change this uh, debug type uh, just to see the line right so we can draw the line if we press this little arrow here we see like what color of the line we have like um, if it hits something it's going to change to green until then it's going to be red you're going to see this in a second and um, it asks us what kind of a debug we want to draw. And this is only for debug, right? This doesn't affect the game in any way. It's just for us to see that we are like successfully drawing the line. So uh, none is not debugging at all. Uh, one frame duration persistent. We're going to use uh, one frame because we are doing this every frame. So we're going to see the line all the time, right? If we do persistent, it's going to just leave the line there. But then we're creating like a trillions of lines because we are like doing this every frame. We just want to draw it once for the frame that is drawn. So if I hit compile and play now, you will see there's a line shooting from my character upwards, right? So just to show you, let's say I want to shoot the ray downwards, right? And you see it's 150, 150 units uh, long. So if I want to shoot it down, I can just multiply this by the negative number, right? Minus 150. So now it's shooting down. And you already see we have this little red square there indicating that this is hitting the ground. And if I'll just play this again just to show you. If I um, go out of my character, you'll see that after the hit, it turns green, right? So until it hits something, it's red. And after, we have a small box and it's green. So this is how a light, a light, hit, uh, a, a light trace works.
generally. I mean, there's a lot more to it, but this is like the basic, the most basic stuff. Now, if I want to make sure, I don't want to shoot the ray from here. So, because generally we want to check something really close to where the legs are, right? In the bottom, at the bottom of the capsule. So I can actually create something, uh, a sim component. I can create a component here and place it. It's like an empty component with just the X, Y, and Z um, data. Let's create it. I add in component, sync, uh, it's a sync component, and we can give it a name, a descriptive name like um, a ladder, check, uh, position, or leg, uh, POS, or LOC, or whatever, right? Um, right? Legs location, whatever. Yeah, just so we know what it is. And of course, we're going to place it. We need to do that. We need to grab it and position it where we want the trace to start from now right why are we doing this because going back to our trace we use the actual location to get the beginning of the trace right but um we want to use that because the the actual location just gives us the center of this capsule but we want to use that same component we created so we can actually now get this thing when we, which we j just created and do uh, get word location. So we're getting the location of that object in the world instead connected here. That's the start. And of course, we need to also add, change it here for our end position calculation, right? This, right? So we're adding to this uh, a minus 50. We're subtracting 150 on, on the direction of the forward vector of our actor. Oh, of the up vector, sorry. And now if you press play, right, we see now the, the ray is moved. It's now shooting off from here and it's immediately hitting the floor, of course, because we are uh, on top of the floor. Okay, so we got our line trace hitting and we can, just to show, um, let's do this um, like, let's do a, a much shorter ray. And I want to show you what happens. Let's do a print string. We have a few things coming out of our trace. We have an out hit. Uh, I don't want to go into that uh, too much, uh, but we can split this and it gives us the location and data about the hit itself, right? So we can get all the data. I mean, the hit, when we do the line trace, like we get information from that red box. Um, so we know uh, where did it hit, what's the distance, the, the direction, blah, blah, blah. We don't need this. We just want to know if there was a hit. So this thing, the return value, just say, if there was a hit, it just returned something. So if we connect this here, just to show you, um, this will say true if we hit something and false if we didn't. So what we should see now, we see true, 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 true. But if we jump, it's false, right? Because then we're too high to show anything. It's too high and it's not hitting anything, so it goes to false. So this is what we're gonna do. We're gonna use this data to toggle our uh, climbing. Because if we are going down the ladder and we hit the floor, if this is true, right? We wanna, if this is true, I'm hitting B and left click, Right, the shortcut to bring in a branch. So I want to say, if this thing is true, if we hit the floor, we want to toggle climbing to be off. Stop it. Okay, so this is this is basically how our thing is working, right? And now it's not going to do anything, uh, I think, right now, because. Uh, we're not climbing, so it's not going to do... It's 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 telling it to stop climbing, but we're not climbing, so it doesn't matter. If we walk on the floor, on the ladder, we might see something weird. Yeah, it's going crazy. Um, but we'll fix this in a second. Of course, it's going crazy. So well, let's start with, with optimizing this. Again, so we, again, we are checking every frame. We're every frame shooting this ray, and we, we don't need to do that. There's no need, because we need to check if we are next to the floor, only when we are climbing, right? So we can like have a, like a sort of a gate here. I'm bringing another branch in and we can just say is climbing, right? If we're climbing, this is something we had before. 
that happens only when we climb the ladder. If we're climbing, then do the check. So if I'm just connecting here like a, a print string for you to show, show you, I mean, <laughs> um, just to show you optimization wise, we are now limiting our tick. You see now it's not working at all, right? It's just checking, just doing one simple, very simple thing, just checking if we're climbing yes or no. It's not doing any, any code. But only when we start climbing, it's starting to, to run the code. So we are doing some sort of an optimization here, right? We're only checking when it's relevant. So it's one thing. We want to check only if we're climbing. But this is still not going to work for us because what's happening is, uh, this crazy thing is, what's happening here is, sorry about this, the moment we start climbing, we are already um, in the distance, right, that we're checking against, and it's trying to take us off the ladder. So what's happening, it's like in a crazy loop. It's trying to climb the ladder and get off. Climb it, get off. Like, every frame like a trillion times and that's why we see that weird thing right because again i just explained it again because um when we are just going on the ladder and the light tray starts uh, checking it's um it's already next to the floor and it just tries to take us take us off the ladder and then back again on off on off right so we need to check one more thing one more thing and and this is a, a nice little trick if we go to our um, movement here. Um, this is like all the pre uh, pre prepared stuff from Epic. We have this move forward thing, right? This is what we are using to move forward, backwards, and when we climb the ladder, it actually changes to up and down. If you remember from the previous tutorials, we're using this uh, motion. So you see this axis value. This is actually a value uh, that goes from minus one to one, depending on. The direction we are pressing the keyboard or the or the gamepad or whatever so if we're pressing forward it's uh, one if we're going backwards it's minus one so when we are doing the climbing we only want to check this naturally if we're going down right if we're trying to climb down of the ladder this isn't we are now trying to check if we're against the floor right not the upper part of the ladder so we can actually bring this axis if we know like it's the name is move forward. We can just bring this, and you can of course create your own. Um, usually people does, so we can just get this value. And just to show you, we can print string this too, just for demonstration purposes, right? We're gonna show you the number we're getting here if we play this. So it's zero. If we press forward, it's one. If we press backwards, it's minus one, right? This is how we knows how to drive the animation and the, and the the movement. So we're just going to use this thing. We're gonna, just going to say, hey, move forward, right? If it's less than zero, right? If it's like going backwards and I'm just typing and here, sorry. Just we can take it from here and do and. So if we are climbing and we're going backwards, right? The movement is less than zero, the direction. Then we can do the check. And now if you play this, our character gets on the ladder and gets off the ladder, right? Really easily. You see the little square for a second there, if you can see, it's just checking for, you see the line trace is not working while I'm going up. When I'm going down, we see this, little red line below my feet. I hope you can see it. Right? And you see this little, for, for a frame, there's a little box there because it hits the floor and then it stops and takes us off the ladder. It's really easy. And this works from every height. I can, let's say, just bring a cube here. Right? And, whoops. Now we can go on and off the ladder, no problem. I right, think I need, need to make sure we have something large enough to hit the trace, right? Uh, otherwise it won't work um, because the trace will miss the, the floor. Like if we had a gap here, it might not work. I don't know. No, it's still working. I mean, it's, it's hitting. I hope uh, you enjoyed this one and uh, I'll see you next time. Thank you for joining.